How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 3. All that is done. Walking down the streets of Canterlot with Celestia by his side, Anon can't help but admit it's nice that some things haven't changed. All the ponies look at Celestia in awe as she walks by, many of them taking a moment to bow before moving on their way. However, there's one change that is apparent to all around. Celestia isn't paying attention to anyone but him. Her head is currently leaned against his shoulder as they walk towards the park. Eyes closed without a care in the world. Anon is still unsure why she's behaving like this, but perhaps he shouldn't be worried. He gets the feeling that she's content right now, and that makes him happy. Maybe his thoughts on her feeling better about the Twilight stuff were right on the money. He'll admit he's never seen her this open around her subjects. Usually she hides behind her princess mask, standing tall and always facing forward. He saw a lot of that during their time setting up the festival. Now though? She no longer sees the need to adopt a royal persona for her subjects. Anon doesn't know how to verbalize how he feels about this, but it's nice. The both of them don't say anything as they make it over to the park, simply basking in each other's company. Upon inspection, Anon doesn't recognize anyone at the park, and that's fine by him. That means he doesn't have to keep an eye out for any unwanted guests. The duo walk over to a secluded part of the park and take a seat on a bench. Just like the last time they came here, Celestia decides to rest her head on Anon's lap. Despite how weird it is, Anon is willing to let this happen. It's calming for him in a way, as he absentmindedly combs his hand through her stunning mane while they sit and enjoy the fresh air together. It's moments like these that make Anon feel as if everything is alright. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Celestia asks with a contented sigh. Anon comes back to reality as he looks above. A lone cloud is hanging in the otherwise clear blue sky before Pegasus comes out of nowhere and sweeps it away. Anon still has a hard time believing his eyes. Despite being here for as long as he has, there are occurrences like this where he reminds himself he's on another world that's vastly different from his own. Yeah, that's nice. Anon says coolly. Must be lovely being able to control the weather to make mornings like this routine. Celestia notices Anon's shift in mood. It's enough to concern her a bit. Does he perhaps miss Earth? It's not a subject Anon prefers to speak freely on. He usually only references a few things from his world, but he never talks about his connections to them. Even when he spoke of hazy memories and other words, he never went into much detail about them. Perhaps this is something Celestia should try to get him to open up about. Maybe grow closer and learn more things about him and his people. It must bother you how different our worlds are. Celestia observes. Even after all this time. <sighs> it does, from time to time. Whenever I think everything is somewhat normal, something comes along to remind me that I'm a stranger in a strange land. Do you miss your world? I... Anon pauses for a moment. I don't miss it for the right reasons. Celestia raises a brow. What do you mean? Uh, I don't remember much about family and all that stuff. But I do kind of miss the luxuries my kind enjoyed. Anon chuckles a bit. The internet was pretty nice. Games and food. Music too. Music is different where I'm from. Uh, trivial things like that. You know, I can give you anything you wish. Celestia says. It may not be much compared to what wonders your people have created, but I would provide you with everything I could. Anon grins. It's not that big of a problem. Whatever I lost in my world, I found something different here. Something more... worthwhile. Anon pats Celestia on the withers. It's odd to think I'm enjoying myself just by sitting here with you. On Earth, I probably would have never done the same thing. Well, I'm pleased that you're happy. Something pops into Celestia's mind. Do you mind if I ask about a few things? I do always enjoy when we get to talk about your world. Well, it's not like Anon had anything better to do. But what else is there for him to talk about when it comes to his world? He's pretty sure he told her about technology and 
politics, among other things. So what else is there to know? Uh, sure. Uh, shoot. Celestia's cheeks heat up as various questions flood her mind. She doesn't want to be too direct with her feelings, but she also finds interest in a few things. Namely, the practices and taboos of a species when it comes to intimacy. I don't mean to make you feel... uncomfortable. Celestia leads. You've told me before about how your culture is averse to being nude, yes? I did. Anon confirms. I wish to explore the more romantic aspects of humanity. Celestia says, trying to remain calm. Is that alright with you? Well, it's certainly an odd thing to ask about, but it isn't too surprising. From time to time, Anon has found himself wondering about pony dating rituals. Maybe it has become more relevant after what happened between him and Lyra. Aside from that, it's probably a question anyone would have when dealing with what's effectively an alien. Do you mind if I ask a few things of my own? Anon asks. I don't mind at all. Alright, you first. Celestia takes a few breaths. She doesn't want to stumble over her questions or babble like a school filly right in front of him. This is her opportunity to gather some much-needed information on how to take the next step with Anon. She can't mess this up. I find it fascinating that nudity in itself can be titillating in your culture. Can you enlighten me as to why that is? This is weird. While he doesn't take it the wrong way, considering it's an honest question from Celestia, he just can't shake the awkwardness of having to explain something so private to her. It's like running a kid through the birds and the bees. It's uncomfortable for everyone involved, especially the person who needs to clarify. Well, um, nudity is mostly reserved for when you're about to have sex with your partner. Anon says bluntly, a small blush on his face. Celestia's eyes widen in shock. Yes, I recall you said something similar when we first discovered this about you. Is there no other reason to be nude? Anon bites his cheek. Uh, well, no. Outside of bathing, we almost always wear clothes. Perhaps in private, some people forgo articles of clothing for comfort, but in public, we stay decent. It's actually against the law to be naked in public. Celestia furrows her brows. Really? Yeah, you'd get tossed in jail, uh, I mean, a dungeon, for a bit. Interesting. Since you've answered my question, I suppose that means it's your turn. So, what do you wish to know? Anon takes a moment to mull over what he wants to ask. It's perhaps the most obvious one, as it's been a thought stuck in his mind for a while now. Is it normal for ponies to have a herd? Celestia feels something catch in her throat. Um, why do you ask? Well, Anon feels his mood darken a bit. Lyra proposed to form one with Bonbon bon and I, so... I don't know. I just think about it every so often. What happened between Anon and his friends clearly still grates him. It's not surprising, considering how close they were. She can only hope to ease some of this pain and perhaps provide consolation. It's not common nowadays. Celestia answers. Though it is not entirely unheard of either. Is that so? Celestia nods by way of response. What about humans? Excluding a small minority, we're largely monogamous. I see. Celestia grows uneasy, considering how her sister could fit into this equation. Um, how do you feel about herds? I know you were very uncomfortable with being nude, so what about herds? Despite the subject matter, Anon does feel things becoming less awkward if only because he's interested in learning more about this place. Not just that, but talking to Tia freely about this stuff kind of makes him feel more at ease with whatever questions he may have. Knowing that he always has someone he can talk to seriously about anything is reassuring. I don't mind the idea. As long as everyone involved is alright with it and love each other, why not? So... Celestia feels hesitant to ask this, but she must know. 
Why didn't you take your business partners up on their offer? Anon jerks in surprise, his hand trembling and no longer petting Celestia. I don't love them, Anon says in a dead tone. Well, not in the way Lyra was hoping for, at least. Anon takes a deep breath. He hoped this morning in the park could have been peaceful, but now he finds his mind flooded with questions. He mostly worries about how Bon Bon is doing. He's sure she's doing fine, but he wonders if maybe he should have tried to keep in touch with her in some way. Still, he doesn't want to remind her of the reasons he left, and would rather stay out of the way until she could work things out with Lyra. Oh boy, some people really know how to ask the wrong questions sometimes. Anyways, let's get on to our considerate donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Ryan, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Match Effect 109, Jock TF, Darkside Raiden, Narwhals, Black Monarch, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mordred, Omicron, Lyra, Runesath, Nan A52, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Rod, Soul, Shadow Moon, Luigi, ADA, Chancellor Crest, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat, GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.